Oh, uh oh. Oh boy. Oh, turn around. What, what you doing? Oh lord. What you doing? What was the what was he doing? No. What was he doing? It's over. He ain't getting up, bro. He got up. He got up. He got up. Oh, they it's over. It's over, bro. He knew it was over, bro. Then he turned around like that, Judah. Yo, that nigga turned around. What's he doing? <laughs> That's bro, that, that, bro. He ain't know who hit him. <laughs> he ain't know who hit him. It's crazy. <laughs> what was he, he doing? He said, "I looked at the ref like, nigga, why you hit me?" Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is not inconsequential, man. This shows that regardless of what you think, regardless of who you like, Frank Warren is a much better matchmaker than Eddie Hearn. The man went five and oh, man. He scored 10 points, man. So that means that he's better at assessing the skills of the, his boxers and lining them up with other boxers that will, that, 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 that will, um, emphasize the skills of his fighters so man, it doesn't it's not inconsequential of course big big salute to the fighters you know what i'm saying bigger salute to the fighters they're the ones that are taking the risk and getting in the ring but frank warren beating eddie hearn by the sweep he brought the brooms out bro come on man y'all know what time it is man get them brooms chat beat them down to the doo-doo brown frank warren they let eddie hearn win the mother freak around where them brooms at chat <laughs> From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. And praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. Y'all know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So, look, man, before we get to it, man, I want to say, bro, do y'all realize last night, yesterday, we had a freaking card that just went down the 5v5 match versus Queensberry, and the main event was canceled. You know what I'm saying? Better be if it bivol. A lot of people don't realize they were supposed to fight last night as the main event. You know, better be if sustained an injury, ruptured, ruptured meniscus. And and the card still went down in remarkable fashion. It was it, it was still phenomenal, man. When's the last time that happened, man? You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, bro. So shout out to Big Turk. You know what I'm saying? Big salute to Big Turk, man. He's really holding down for boxing. Not, who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? No damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah, Big Turk, uh, a.k.a. Turk Yala Sheik. That's how y'all know him, you know what I'm saying? I call him Big Turk, though, you know what I'm saying? We got a personal relationship established, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all gonna see more about that coming soon. The doctor's in the house. Y'all know what time it is, man. Oh, you mad because I'm styling on it. But yeah, so let's get right to it, man. But before we do, also, too, I want to tell y'all this, man. A lot of people are downplaying Frank Warren and Queensberry's win over Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. Bro, yes, of course the fighters fight, but... This does. This is not inconsequential, man. This shows that regardless of what you think, regardless of who you like, Frank Warren is a much better matchmaker than Eddie Hearn. The man went five and zero, oh, man. He scored ten points, man. So that means that he's better at assessing the skills of the, his boxers and lining them up with other boxers that will that that that, that will um emphasize the skills of his fighters so man, it doesn't it's not inconsequential of course big big salute to the fighters you know what i'm saying bigger salute to the fighters they're the ones that are taking the risk and getting in the ring but frank warren beating eddie hearn by the sweep he brought the brooms out bro come on man y'all know what time it is man get them brooms chat beat them down to the doo, doo brown frank warren they let eddie hearn win the mother freak around where them brooms at chat <laughs> bro they ain't win them they ain't win one match bro so let's get to it, man. Let's, let's let's talk about the fights now. First off, we gonna go in we gonna go in sequential order, you know, uh, chronological order in which they transpired. So first up, we had Craig the Spider Richards versus Willie Hutchinson. I was actually impressed with Willie Hutchinson, man. I, these are two relatively unknown fighters for me. You know, I never I seen Willie Hutchinson fight one time. He has one loss, and then Craig, Craig Richards he has three losses, and his most notable fights are actually two of his losses. He lost to Dimitri Bivol and Joshua Boxy, who are two great fighters, of course. Bivol, power for power fighter. So there's no shame in that. But I thought Spider was gonna bring more. He was kind of a stiff fighter. You know, he's always been kind of. Stiff. But I thought he was going to be able to throw more combinations and, and get to him more. But I feel like he was trying to outbox uh, Hutchison, who, who was who was who was, who was uh, impressively slick. Um, and, and it didn't work. And then by the time he realized that his box, he wasn't going to outbox him. And he began to sell out and started attacking more and become, making it more of a fight, more of a brawl. It was already too late. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to both of them for fighting. Willie Hutchison got the win. Um, I don't know where Craig Spiders Richards goes from here. Uh, Willie Hutchison, you know. 
he has that's a nice bounce back, you know, from his loss. And then um, let's see what else, what else, man. He could he could put that loss behind him. And then next up, we have Ray Ford versus Dick Ball. You know, we can't have the boxing event without controversy. That's a fact, ain't it? Ain't it? All right, then. Now, I will say this, man. Shout out to Nick Ball. You know, I was impressed with Nick Ball because I'm a heavy critic of Nick Ball because I thought his last fight against Ray Vargas was terrible because he didn't throw any shots to the body. A lot of people say, oh, Nick Ball got robbed. No. No, he did not get robbed. He, he was He's a smaller fighter, more compact fighter, going against a tall, lanky Ray Vargas. He didn't throw one body shot. When he fought Ray Vargas, it looked like he had no game plan. He was just trying to throw haymakers and and, 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 and out-muscle them the whole time. And, um, yeah, I, I thought he was very fortunate to get get out that fight with a draw because I thought uh, there's no doubt that Ray Vargas won the first half of the fight definitively. Um, but, yeah, so I was impressed with Nick Ball because he actually went to the body against Ray Ford, and he, and he, looked, he looked pretty good doing it, you know what I'm saying? I thought Ray Ford won. Because a Ray Ford is a champion, and I thought Ray Ford was more judicious with his punches, but he was more effective and more precise with his punches. You know, he was doing more damage. Uh, he hurt Nick Ball a couple of times. But the reason why I'm not mad at this decision, because it was a split decision for Nick, Nick Ball, because Nick Ball was more active, you know, and um, you never know what the judges look, judges are looking at. But me personally, I thought that Ray, Ray Ford, he was do, he doing what I anticipated him to do. You know, he, he counterpunched well. Uh, uh, he was he threw the more precise punches. Um, I thought he deserved the win, but I'm not upset about it. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Nick Ball. You know, he he. he Fought a good fight, and he won for Queensberry, man. So, uh, you know, what I'm saying that's what two and zero for Queensberry. <laughs> And plus, Ray Ford said he's moving up, so I wish you the best at 130. He fought a good fight. I just wish that Ray Ford would have fought with more urgency because I don't know when these boxers are going to learn, man. And, and, and their corners need to know this, too. Uh, when it's a close fight, you don't know who's winning. You don't know who, what judge, what the judges see. So I wish that Ray Ford would have fought with more urgency, uh, especially like he did in the 12th round. I think he could have potentially even gotten Nick, Nick Ball out of there. But, you know, he's struggling to make ways going up to 130. So, hey, he's going to embark on a new journey, man. So let's get it. All right, so there, that's that's uh, Nick Ball just won that. And then uh, next up we had, uh, what's the next fight we had? Was it Dubois or no, no, no. Hamza Shiraz versus Austin Ammo Williams. Excuse me, Austin Tiger Williams. Um, I thought this was a good lesson for Austin. Um, well, it can be a good lesson, right, if he learns from it. Um, Hamza Shiraz did what he was supposed to do. Austin Williams got um, Shiraz hurt a couple times. You know, Hamza Shiraz being uh, Queensberry's captain. Uh, he got him hurt a couple times, but it's, every time he got him hurt, it's like he didn't know what to do. He started brawling and panicking and, and just throwing crazy shots. And shout out to Hamza Shiraz for keeping his composure throughout being hurt multiple times, you know. And he eventually just broke him down because he was the more fundamentally sound boxer. I don't know Austin, uh, Austin Tiger Williams' history, but to me, he looks like uh, he was maybe a former football player. He's from Texas, so I wouldn't be shocked. Like he's a former football player that picked up boxing you know i didn't like you know but i didn't like that he was always jittery you know but that's just his style you know because I, I felt like that from when i first seen him like two two or three fights ago i was like man he's so jittery but that's just his style and um i don't really care for it but i do think that he he, he fought a good fight he's a, he's a tough fighter like i said he got him hurt but he has to work on some things like closing out and keeping his composure and um i think that if he takes this as a lesson learned he can he can improve and bounce back from a strongly you know what i'm saying uh shout out to hamza shiraz so he handled ben is very fundamental fighter tall fighter uses range well and and he, and he eventually knocked him out man so and, and he was a captain so he got double the points so he got four points for that knockout you got knocked the fuck out man Give me my goddamn money. Um, for Queensberry, on behalf of Queensberry. Next up, we have Philip Hergovich versus Dana Dubois. Me, personally, man, I thought that Ray Ford and Nick Ball, I'm sorry, I thought that Hamza Shiraz and Austin Emma Williams on paper would be the most competitive fight. Um, but this fight right here, Dubois, I'm not going to lie. I thought Hergovich was going to beat him, man. I thought Hergovich was going to beat him easily. Man, Daniel Dubois, he, to me, that was the most impressive win of the night. He looked the most impressive out of everybody, man. He dominated Philip Hergovich. He got he, he got, he got um, hit a couple times early. But as far as that, man, he took over, bro. And and especially with the lore, you know, the background with Hergovich saying that um, he um, – that uh, he he whooped he whooped on uh, Daniel Dubois and and put, and uh, uh, allegedly sent him to the hospital during their sparring sessions. Man, Dubois called out Hergovich and he showed you why. Man, Hergovich is on the come up, man. And I think I mean not Hergovich, sorry. Uh, Dubois is on the come up, man, by beating Hergovich. And I definitely think he deserves a fight against Anthony Joshua. If he does not get a fight with AJ, I'll be very disappointed because you know that's something that um, they they said the winner of Dubois and Hergovich would get AJ. So if they rename now, it's just because. They, <laughs> because they, everybody anticipated the Hergovich to win, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Dubois with the big upset, man. He looked good. He looked strong. He looked formidable. And like I say, I, I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm not a big Daniel Dubois fan, but he started. He started. He started, he started convincing me. You know what I'm talking about? Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. So shout out to Daniel Dubois. I thought that was the best performance of the night, man. And um, next up, the final fight we have um, Zayle Zhang versus Deontay Wilder. I told y'all, y'all know I love the Bronx Bomber, man. Bomb Squad all day. Bomb Squad. 
but I, I had Zayn coming into this fight, like I said, and I mean it, man. I, I, um, I, and I was correct. I, I think I thought that Zayn would be too much for him because of this current iteration of Wilder. Wilder is just not the same after Joseph Parker. You know what I'm saying? Not after jo going into Joseph Parker. Like I, 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 I think that Joseph Parker that was an impressive win for him because Deontay Wilder's name. But if you watch that fight between Joseph Parker and Deontay Wilder, there's no way that you could tell me that you were more impressed with how good Joseph Parker was that you were surprised at how bad Deontay Wilder looked. Deontay Wilder just looked like a shell of himself, you know what I'm saying? He, he's not the same, man. I thought he should retire because, especially at the heavyweight division, that's a that's very dangerous to be getting hit to the um to the man in which he was by Joseph Parker. Like I said, I, it's very surprising to me that, uh, that, that Joseph Parker didn't knock him out. You know, any other heavyweight would have knocked out Deontay Wilder and comes in Big Bang Zang. <laughs> Big Zang, Big Bang Zang hit him with a big bang, man. Zay 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 played this very formidable fighter. In fact, Zay 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 dropped Joseph Parker twice, and it was amazing. You know, that, to me, that was a better performance. From I was more impressed by Joseph Parker's ability to overcome two knockdowns against Zay Zay than I was with his win against uh, Deontay Wilder. So, I just think Deontay Wilder. You know, while he did look good, he looked better than I thought he would against against Zhang. You know, so he did channel some of his um, some of his uh, some of the old Deontay Wilder, but it just wasn't enough, and he couldn't sustain it. And then when he got knocked out, man, it's like he ain't know what hit him. He ain't know who hit him. Oh boy! Oh, turn around! What, what you doing? Oh Lord! In the middle of the fight, like pop, pop, shit! Hey, Kevin! Hey, he just hit me twice. <laughs> He looked at the ref like he thought they was he was getting jumped. If they not jumping me, ain't nobody jumping me. No. Like I didn't know what was wrong with him, man. So, um, but yeah, Zhang did his thing. This is not to take anything away from Zhang because Zhang handled business. Like I said, it wasn't the, this Deontay Wilder that we saw wasn't as bad as when we saw against Joseph Parker. But it's still not Deontay Wilder, man. I think that Deontay Wilder is is going to have a hard time. Like I said before, is going to have a hard time competing in a safe fashion at a high level now. But you know, he's going to get the big fights because of his name. But like I said, Deontay Wilder, I think it's too dangerous for him to for him to fight right now. And I think he had a very good illustrious career, a fantastic career. Though people will hate on him, say he's not a good boxer. But I think we should focus on on the fact that he maximized his talent. He was a limited fighter, and he still was able to become um, heavyweight champion of the world. Day long, sir. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Bomb squad. Uh, for a long time, and he's undefeated for a long time. And and I think you know you're a fool if you don't think that um that uh, his his career wasn't successful and that he's going to be a future Hall of Famer, man. Is he though? But so that was it, man. Queensberry swept Eddie Hearn and Rash Rule, man. Shout out to Frank Warren. Shout out to all the fighters that won. Shout out to the fighters that lost as well, man, because it was, it was great fights, man. And lastly, of course, we had Bivol. Well, Bivol looked amazing against Malik Zidane. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Zidane was the late replacement for Artur Benabiev. And man... Bro, this just makes me want to see better be and Bivol even more now. You know that has been rescheduled to October twelfth, which I think is too early to come back from a um, from a ruptured meniscus. But we'll see, man. Um, so yeah, man, Bivol. That, that that was a that was a great performance by Bivol. Great performance by Zhang. Fantastic performance from. Um, Daniel Dubois and the rest of them, you know what I'm saying? Hamza, Nick Ball, and uh, Willie Hutchinson, man. Shout out to Queensberry, shout out to Frank Ward. Uh, shout out to all Eddie Hearn and Matt Ruby, their fighters as well, man. If I appreciate y'all rocking me, that's a, that's a synopsis, man, of it, you know what I'm saying? Hey, catch y'all on the flip side. We out. God bless. Peace. Shout out to Boxer, man. Boxer just turned it up, man. Remember, with God, we can do anything. Without God, we're nothing. Y'all be easy. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.